Right, masters, as you probably remember, in the past we have uh, integrated WebDriver IO with Appium. And if you remember correctly, I was capable to run my tests using the Android Studio emulator, right? That's something that we have done in the past. But now in this one, I want to explain you how you can run the same scripts that we have developed before using our local environment, but now running our script using browser stack, right? And I want to explain you all the details of how you, I, I have achieved this to you uh, so you can understand how I did it and you can reproduce it as well. So let's go ahead and take a look of how this works. I hope that you enjoy it. I just wanted to tell you that uh, if you want if you want to understand how to configure WebDriver IO to run your Android or iOS uh, mobile tests, right? Uh, while you have a full uh, one hour video here, you just have to look for Geog Media, Android and WebDriver IO and you're gonna find this, Android testing. This is the, the thumbnail, but it is mobile automation testing with Appium plus WebDriver IO and Android, right? You're gonna find how to organize and how you can configure something like this uh, because I have my, my scripts here. I have implemented also the object model here to have a better structure, right, if you want to. And also uh, here you can see all the details about the configurations locally. And now in this video, we're gonna review how I did it to configure it and run it in browser stack as well, right? And well, I, with this said, it is also important to mention that this work uh, that I have done, um, and it is public for you and free, you can find this uh, repo, Appium Demo, and you're gonna see all these details about the integration and what I have done in the past video and now in this one, because I have some notes about the browser stack integration here, right? And that's basically what I'm gonna be doing in this video, all right? Let's do it. Let's see how uh, the integration works. It's pretty simple and I'm gonna show you how, how it works. All right, masters, as I told you before, in this repository, you're gonna see a lot of notes and I hope that you also find them useful because here we have a lot of information and it is for free. But here we have the browser stack integration and let's understand what we have to do. Well, the first step is that we need an, a browser stack account. They have a free trial version, right? With 100 minutes available for you to test and well, make your demos. That's basically what I did, right? And in this particular case, we need to use this service. They have different products. They have the live product, the app live, automate, Percy. And in my particular case for this demo, we need app automate. It is basically a service that help us for test automation for native and hybrid mobile apps, all right? So if you come here the first time, you are going, you're gonna see a different, uh, of course, well, kind of view, right? Because right now I have the dashboard and this is working fine. Actually, I think that I can uh, delete this uh, execution so you can see the, the same view uh, that, that you will have as soon as you create a new account, okay? This is the one, I guess, let me see. There it is. It, it is telling us that get started with App Automate, right? And here we have the different frameworks that they they have uh, integrated. They have Java, JUnit, TestNG. In our case, is WebDriver IO. Okay, but the most important part here is that you need to upload your application. In my case, um, I need to upload this particular one. This is the one that we have configured in the last video and that we are using for demo purposes. So you just have to upload your uh, application here, right? And you're gonna see that as soon as this is done, it's gonna uh, give us a kind of a, uh, well, a key, right? You need to preserve this particular ID because it is going to be uh, the place where browser stack saves the, well, the application. And you need to set this particular data in your desired capabilities in WebDriver IO. I can show you that right away using here the configuration that I have created for Android browser stack configuration, right? And you can see here in the capabilities that I have Appium app. And in this particular case, I'm using something pretty similar than the value that I just showed you before, right? So as you can see, you need to save this particular ID. To be honest, I'm not sure where I can find it again, so please save it in a safe place, all right? <laughs> all right, 
Now that you have this and you understand that you need to use the app automate service, you already uploaded your application to browser stack. The next step is going to be uh, well, that you are going to need to have your access key and username as well. Where you can find it, it is basically here, access key. And you can see your username and your access key here. This is also essential information to get this integration done. All right, that's beautiful. Let's continue with the video. Now, uh, it is telling us that we need to use uh, or we need to install something in our framework. Here in the documentation, we here we have more details to be honest right and we need to use the browser stack service that is an official service developed by browser stack and web driver io right and we need to install this particular dev dependency so you just have to copy this go to your framework right and run that particular command npm install web driver io browser stack service and save dev to save it as a dev dependency and you're gonna notice that now we have this particular one uh, installed in our framework. That's it. That's the only dependency that you need for this particular, uh, well, integration, right? That's beautiful. Now, as uh, if I come here again to my, uh, well, my, well, my, my, my particular repository with my notes, you're gonna need to, well, um, to add the username and the access key to the configuration file, okay? So what I have done in this particular framework for the demo purpose, right, is that I have created a new configuration file, okay? This is the one. And as you can see at the beginning of my configuration file, I am just defining a couple of properties in this object, the user and the key. Of course, this is not the recommended way to manage your credentials because it is not safe at all, right? And probably you may want to use a package, something like a dot .mv, right? Which is a package from a from the well, the node package manager that we have, and, and you can manage your, your credentials using this particular package. You can, or if you want to, I can make a video in the future so you can understand how to do it. But to, to keep it simple and easy to you for uh, understand and follow me, right? I have created this a couple of properties right right here right here we have the user and the key and the values are basically the ones that, that, that i showed you before right here in the access key you can see my username and the access key i just have to copy each of them and paste it in my configurations now that you have this right uh, well the, the same configurations for the spec files because uh, it is where my my tests are uh, under another folder, so I need to specify that in my specs. We know that because we saw that in the in the last video, right? And also here in the capabilities, you're gonna find um, well the capabilities that we need. All right, we need the platform name Android. We need the app and device. In this particular case, we need to make sure that the device name is one of the the that browser stack can provide to us, right? Because they have a kind of a device list. So we need to make sure that this is the device name that they have and also the platform version that they have. Because if you run this, the version 11 or something, you're gonna see that they don't have pixel tree with the version 11. So we need to make sure that the device that we wanna run and the platform version that we want to use are, well, actually available in browser stack, right? So that's important. And then you're gonna also notice, well, that instead of the Appium application uh, path locally, because if you remember in the last video, we were defining my application path locally, right? Here in my own uh, repository. However, um, well, for browser stack, we just need to specify the, well, the path name that they provided as soon as we uploaded the application, right? Do you remember that? I hope so, because it is important. And then that's it. I guess that as, as simple as that, I, I'm missing something. And it is that under the services, instead of using Appium, right? If you remember, let me show you this. The service should be a browser stack now. Instead of Appium, we need to use a browser stack. So that's important, guys. That's basically all the configuration that you need for this particular matter. Then, if you want to, as I did before, I, I just created a, a well, an, an a script named a WDIO BS. Basically, it stands for browser stack, right? And I'm just, well, running my web driver IO uh, command and also specifying that I want to use the configuration file that I just configured and explained to you a few seconds ago, right? So let's run it. Let's, let's run this and let's see if it works. If I use the command npm run, the, the, uh, wdio bs, right? 
you're gonna notice that it is gonna start the execution and here we have the uh, capability set. And well, uh, well, browser stack is telling me that it is receiving something and you can see here the execution, right? Um, it is important and, and it is interesting because we're gonna have a lot of details here. The, um, for instance, we're gonna have the text logs let me show you this. Initializing device, downloading the application, installing it, launching the application. And then we have a text log about what is happening in every single element, right? Clicking, finding, clicking, clearing the text input, sending keys, and all the information, right? That's beautiful and that's important. And also here we have a live execution in browser stack. That's beautiful, guys. Let me let me know if if you don't like this, but from my <laughs> from my point of view, it's beautiful, right? And you can see that uh, as after a few seconds, you're gonna have a full video about the execution. If you wanna, well, review it again, you can go ahead and do it as well. So as you can see, guys, this is working. This is working with browser stack, and it is beautiful. I hope that you that you can see the value of this particular integration, right? Let me just finish the execution because as you remember, well, uh, I have an implementation with and without the page object model or the well, view, mod, view mod object model, I'm sorry. But as you can see here, we have the video and well, if you wanna recap or see what is wrong with the test, you can come here and see the video, right? That's beautiful. Also this particular uh, title, it's probably a capability that we need to set and I, I haven't done that, but you can come here and do it as well. Here you have the input capabilities, the device capabilities, and also network locks, that's beautiful, app profiling, other locks, and also issues detected, right? The the build name is not specified, that's something that I, I need to do. But guys, I hope that you see the power of this particular integration, hope you, that you like it, and see you in the next one. This was Joe Media, and see you soon. Thank you very much, bye-bye.